Okay. Big homie want to look like. What are we talking about here? We're talking about Basquiat. Have you never stood next to nobody? Because you study the 48 Laws of Power. Nah, man, you get, that's whack. And he knew exactly what I meant because he'd been standing next to something his entire career. Right. He stood next to Big, he stood next to Mace, mm -hmm. stood next to Jock. Look, Puffy might be the destination for anybody going nowhere. 50 Cent is known for his knack for commenting on industry developments, particularly when it comes to his well-documented conflicts with Diddy and Jay-Z. Recently, amidst the swirling allegations surrounding Diddy, 50 Cent hasn't shied away from sharing his thoughts. Their feud, which has seen both verbal and clashes, traces back to their days at Bad Boy Records. A recent revelation from Tony Yayo, a member of 50 Cent's G-Unit crew, sheds new light on their animosity. Yayo disclosed that 50 Cent was close to signing with Bad Boy Records, only for Diddy to pull out of the deal at the last minute. This revelation adds an unexpected twist to their ongoing feud. You know, the Prem situation, and you know, a lot of people were scared of Prem, 50 wasn't, so it was just like, you know. While not widely publicized, it's worth noting that 50 Cent has in indeed discuss the possibility of a record deal with Diddy and Bad Boy Records on at least one occasion. I was going back and forth and he just, he just, he, look, they knew I was talented. They just looked at it and was like, ah, I don't want all of this stuff that comes with it. The exact motives behind Diddy's choice not to sign 50 Cent remain subject to conjecture and discussion. It's unclear whether Diddy fully recognized 50 Cent's potential at the time or if other considerations influenced his decision. Some theories propose that Diddy may have felt uneasy about 50 Cent's bold and daring demeanor, traits that have undoubtedly shaped 50 Cent's career significantly. He stumbled over it, but he didn't know the trouble that came with it. Sean Diddy Combs, who established Bad Boy Records in the early 1990s, assembled a formidable roster of artists, featuring luminaries such as the notorious Big, Foxy Brown, and Faith Evans. Despite his history of astute signings, Diddy made the notable choice not to pursue the emerging rapper 50 Cent, a decision that continues to generate intrigue and conjecture. Yeah, I saw Yale said that you were supposed to sign the Bad Boy. Yeah, you know what? In a recent interview with Vlad TV, the G-Unit rapper recounted a meeting he and 50 Cent had with Puff Daddy regarding a potential deal. According to Yayo, he expressed the belief that Puff Daddy's choice not to sign 50 Cent stands out as one of the biggest mistakes the label ever made. This insight sheds light on the perspectives of those directly involved and underscores the historical significance of that pivotal decision in the music industry. He began by saying, a lot of people don't know this story. 50 went to Diddy for Bad Boy. A lot of people don't know that. We had the meeting, and it was so crazy that Diddy didn't sign him. I know that was one of the biggest mistakes of Bad Boy. And you know, the Kenneth Supreme McGriff situation, a lot of people were scared of Preemie, 50 wasn't. According to Yayo's account, the meeting seems to have occurred after the release of 50 Cent's debut single in 1999, titled How to Rob. In this track, he included lyrics that involved extorting Diddy and making threats against various other well-known rappers. It's worth noting that this meeting transpired before the unfortunate incident in which 50 Cent was shot nine times in May 2000. Yoyo explained, we had a meeting with Diddy, it was me and 50, and he took the meeting out of respect. He had deals all over the table. I wasn't saying he was going to take the deal. He might have not. But Diddy didn't want to take the deal because of all the drama. But 50 was the hottest N on the planet. Tony Yayo also raised the point that 50 Cent had been involved in writing for Diddy. And he recalled some memorable words from their meeting that had a lasting impact on him. Yayo mentioned that 50 Cent had previously written for Diddy, which happened quite a while back, possibly on a track like g Depp's Let's Get It. Yayo further shared that Diddy had emphasized three key aspects about rappers during their meeting, bank accounts, relationships, and luxury cars. At that time, they didn't have much money, but those words stuck with him. He further went on saying, and later on, I had what he said, I had bank accounts, B and Bentleys, and that makes you a target. I've been shot at numerous times, but I say those prayers before I leave the house. Moreover, there have been suggestions from people that Diddy has always had a strong drive for financial success. One person wrote, 50 can have 200 dudes with him for security, but you can tell Yayo is the only one he need around when it's all said and done. You can't replace a lifetime homie you can trust, especially when you make it. Another one added, can't even be upset about Diddy not signing 50. It happened the way it was supposed to. Dree M. Plus, we know Diddy has a history of tanking artists' careers and producing one-hit wonders. 50 should send Diddy a check and say, thanks for not signing me. There are allegations circulating that Hollywood functions like a shadowy 
shadowy entity, purportedly involving figures such as Jay-Z and Diddy, who spare no effort to maximize profits. This alleged malevolent influence has supposedly unearthed a troubling avenue for financial gain, which involves the exploitation of numerous young individuals, particularly female artists. It's claimed that Ice Cube is vocal about these matters and doesn't shy away from addressing them. I think you feel better about yourself when you say what needs to be said at the time it needs to be said and not afterwards where you go home and think, I should have said this. Reportedly, he argues that many female artists have faced substantial challenges allegedly orchestrated by Jay-Z and Diddy, often without acknowledgement. Their purported experiences, he claims, have resulted in a tumultuous and arduous journey. They owe a lot of people a lot of favors. The more money you give them, the more you, you're listened to. Ice Cube has previously underscored Hollywood's track record of exploitation, pointing out that it encompasses everyone, even prisoners. Moreover, it's not solely Ice Cube who shares this perspective. There's a perception that Hollywood closely collaborates with the powerful private industry, resulting in mutual benefits derived from the unpaid labor of millions of inmates. This concern extends to the vulnerability of young children, innocent teenagers, and especially female artists, who may be susceptible to exploitative practices within the entertainment sector. Your judges into a prison camp where were the protectors of the kids at that time? Ice Cube has consistently made alarming allegations, claiming that Hollywood functions akin to a profiting from subjecting individuals to various challenges. Strikingly, there appears to be substantial evidence supporting this unsettling notion. Whether it's Hollywood CEOs or record label owners, those in positions of power within the industry allegedly have an interest in bolstering the prison population. According to these assertions, the underlying motive is as straightforward and sinister as one might expect. And they definitely know who they are. Um, a lot of people would be like, what, who, who, who? Come on, man, stop playing. Ice Cube appeared on Bill Maher's Club Random Podcast, made some bone-chilling revelations. He says Hollywood executives want people to be locked up, and they help create a whole culture of violence and thug life to make this possible. This isn't just mindless speculation. Anyone can easily see the truth when you look at where the money goes. He spoke very clearly about the connection between Hollywood and the influential industry. Who benefits and profits off our bickering and division? I don't know their names, but if you follow the money, you go high enough, you start to see literally the same people who own the record labels own the prisons. The music industry also benefits from landing naive young people into prisons. And the higher-ups use music to push these people into the lifestyle of crime. Ice Cube spoke about this and said, it seems really kind of suspicious, if you want to say that word, that the records that come out are really geared to push people towards that prison industry. According to the rapper, the whole industry is involved in creating an environment that makes young people more prone to and a very sinister and elaborate social engineering is at work here in order to make profit off of people's lives. You know, some social engineering going on here to, to make sure those prison stay full. According to Ice Cube and Bill Maher's discussion on the podcast, record label owners allegedly contribute to the glamorization of and in their music, intentionally portraying these lifestyles as cool. The implication is that this strategy influences young people to idealize a path of and As a result, more and more youth may find themselves entangled in the justice system, depriving them of a genuine opportunity to build a decent life for themselves. Is that the kind of stuff in rap lyrics works as a funnel to get people uh, inspired to do the kind of things that would get them in prison. Allegations have surfaced suggesting that individuals associated with the case have a significant interest in the occult and may have been involved in human sacrifices in the past. Recent revelations have shed light on various aspects of the case, hinting at possible foul play. What sets this moment apart is the explicitness with which these accusations are being made. A growing number of supporters are now calling for the investigation to be reopened, demonstrating steadfast dedication to ensuring that Aliyah receives the justice she deserves. No name, I won't name. It's up. No, you. You know what I'm saying? And just for Minister Farrakhan, I love you, but the way you read that, I took that as a slight. 
You know what I'm saying? People like Kanye West have also boldly stated that not only his mother, but numerous others have purportedly become victims of a mysterious and cruel organization engaged in disturbing human sacrifices. Despite the seriousness of these allegations, there appears to be a reluctance among many to directly confront or challenge this enigmatic force. Kanye, renowned for his outspoken nature, fearlessly continues to articulate his views, whether they involve controversial ideas or what he perceives as concealed truths. His unwavering determination to share his opinions has once again thrust these controversial claims into the spotlight, igniting intense debates and concerns. People are looking over. You know, the, the media has run all these stories smearing me for saying, hey, I can't be anti-Semitic if I'm a Semite. Recent statements from celebrities have left many puzzled, but for those willing to delve deeper, a perplexing narrative begins to emerge. Without explicitly stating it, some celebrities have dropped hints that numerous figures in the entertainment industry might be involved in sinister activities, including human sacrifices. Kanye West, in particular, claims to remain uncontrolled by Hollywood power players because he hasn't participated in such activities. However, his cryptic references to a list of individuals possibly under someone's influence raise thought-provoking questions. Kanye seems to be alluding to the secretive Illuminati organization, suggesting that some of its members may be connected to dark deeds. In this enigmatic puzzle of words, Kanye leaves us to ponder the shadows lurking behind the glamour of the entertainment industry. They can't control me. They can control Shaq and Charles Barkley. They can control LeBron James. They can control Beyonce and Jay-Z. Ain't no name, I won't say. It's up. Jaguar right White's perspective on Aliyah's tragic passing adds a compelling layer to the ongoing discourse. According to her, at the time of Aliyah's untimely death, Beyonce's solo career was facing challenges, and she needed a breakthrough moment to propel her to superstardom, allegedly with Jay-Z's assistance. Aliyah's unfortunate demise seemingly provided that crucial boost, ultimately establishing Beyonce as the queen of many hearts. As Aliyah's memory fades, questions arise about how long the same individuals will benefit from recurring tragedies. Some argue that accountability for any potential wrongdoing is long overdue. Even fans are commending Jaguar for her outspoken stance in defense of their beloved songstress, suggesting that it's time for justice to prevail in the name of Aliyah. One fan wrote, I'm afraid for this woman she has to know that they will try to stop her for putting this truthful information out. People are already seeing the truth behind the music industry, but she's confirming much respect for this brave woman. The complexity of Aliyah's case is further compounded by her association with R. Kelly. There are circulating claims suggesting that in R. Kelly's trial, some of his alleged victims were coerced into providing false testimony, raising concerns about the fairness of the court proceedings. Additionally, an audio leak has surfaced, purportedly featuring an alleged federal informant stating that they successfully influenced one of R. Kelly's witnesses. These developments add layers of intrigue and controversy to an already convoluted legal situation surrounding the allegations against R. Kelly. Sharon Winbush, a former employee of R. Kelly, claims to have sent the provided audio. She made the decisions. She made the decisions of her own. And it was not easy. It was days and days and days of crime. The singer sought the appeals court to either overturn his conviction or grant him a new trial. Notably, in a separate trial in Chicago, Kelly had previously been sentenced to 20 years in prison in February after being found guilty of child and enticing a young person, as reported by TMZ. During the Chicago trial, Kelly's attorney expressed similar concerns, stating that the government's burden cannot be met with the inference of bad character or tendency to commit you may consider him to be the most immoral, dishonest person on the planet, and that has nothing to do with whether the government has met its burden. At that time, a judge ordered Kelly to serve 19 of the 20 years concurrently with his other sentence. Furthermore, another legal representative for R. Kelly petitioned the judge overseeing his ST case to vacate his conviction and initiate a new trial. The basis for this request is the argument that his trial attorneys displayed incompetence and that the singer was unjustly depicted as a S. deviant to the jury. Because as the defendant was forced to defend against dozens of uncharged claims of S and A misbehavior, much of it lawful, albeit unpalatable for some, the defendant was stripped of the presumption of innocence and denied a fair trial, attorney Jennifer Bonjean wrote in a legal memorandum filed with the court. Speculations have circulated regarding Jay-Z's potential involvement with R. Kelly's case involving young artists. Reports suggest that Jay-Z played a role in initiating the documentary Surviving R. Kelly, possibly providing 
providing financial support for Dream Hampton to produce the documentary, detailing Kelly's accusations. This has led some to speculate that Jay-Z may have wanted to bring an end to Kelly's career. If one doubts the credibility of Ronnie's claims about Jay-Z's involvement, another angle may be convincing. It's noted that this case wasn't the first instance of Jay-Z assisting Dream financially. In fact, the rapper reportedly wired tens of thousands of dollars in minutes after she requested help with expenses incurred by protesters demonstrating against police brutality. Given Jay-Z's generosity towards Dream Hampton, it's plausible that he also decided to fund the documentary she was creating. Their long-standing history further suggests a close relationship, possibly contributing to Jay-Z's willingness to support her endeavors. You know, Dream Hampton was his ex-girlfriend. Dream Hampton wrote his book, the Decoded Book. You know, he, mm. he, he funded her protests in Ferguson. The narrative suggests that Jay-Z seized an opportunity by financing Dream's documentary, which not only gave her career a significant boost, but also contributed to the downfall of R. Kelly. However, the text implies that Jay-Z had a substantial list of motivations, with one chief among them being a lawsuit that not only left his reputation tarnished, but also resulted in a financial setback of $70 million. It, it was a little deeper than the best of both worlds situation. You know, R. Kelly sued him for like $70 million after that. R. Kelly's actions not only disrupted Jay-Z's tour, but also led to a lawsuit that cost Jay-Z millions of dollars. However, the implications didn't end there. Jay-Z understood that if Kelly emerged unscathed from the trial, he might eventually speak out. After all, Jay-Z had his own secrets to protect. Damon Dash, singer Aaliyah's boyfriend at the time of her death, disclosed how Jay-Z pursued Aaliyah even when she was very young. I did not know Jay was trying to holler at her, but then it just happened like that. He was trying, I was trying, everybody was trying, he was going hard. Damon even suggested that Aaliyah had rejected Jay-Z's advances or possibly kept him in the friend zone. This revelation sheds light on Jay-Z's long-standing animosity towards Kelly, especially considering that Kelly ultimately married the girl Jay-Z had an interest in. The music executive further disclosed that Jay-Z displayed noticeable resentment once he learned that Damon was pursuing Aaliyah. Damon clarified that he had some feelings about it, but it was widely known. People attempted to portray him as deeply involved with her. Despite Jay-Z sending gifts and making romantic gestures, he was actively courting her. Consequently, both men found themselves exerting considerable effort, coincidentally ending up in the same house on the 4th of July. So we were both going hard, and we, right. and we ended up in the same house for 4th, 4th of July, so we were for some reason, this, this day... Wait a minute, you, Jay, and Aaliyah ended up in the same house? Yeah. It was a situation where Aaliyah's attention might sway toward him one moment and then toward me the next. Damon emphasized his consistency in his pursuit of the singer, saying, but that particular week, I was on top of my game. Everything I said was witty. You know what I mean? He recollected a specific incident, saying, I remember coming downstairs and Jay-Z had this sigh. His friends were teasing him and making jokes. However, it appears that Jay-Z ultimately emerged victorious in the pursuit, and reports suggest that he also dated Aaliyah at some point. There are rumors suggesting that Jay-Z was involved with Foxy Brown when she was very young. Wendy Williams discussed this topic, stating, Jay-Z and Foxy Brown were allegedly a romantical thing. All right, I'll say alleged. But we know, we know. Yeah, she hit it before Beyonce, allegedly. Mm -hmm. Given the scrutiny and potential consequences he witnessed during R. Kelly's trial, Jay-Z likely understands the gravity of such accusations. This could explain why he funded the documentary at a strategic time, allowing jurors to form their opinions before the trial began. Critics point out the irony in Jay-Z's efforts to bring down Kelly while allegedly being involved in similar behavior himself. This apparent contradiction raises questions about Jay-Z's motives and the complexities of his involvement in the situation. One person pointed out, Beyonce was 19 when they started dating, and Jay-Z never dated Aaliyah. They were friends when she was around 21. She dated Jay-Z's friend Dame Dash. Foxy was 18 when the song with Jay-Z came out and she has said many times this it rumor is not true. Another one added, leave R. Kelly alone and let justice prevail at his appeal. The truth always comes out in the end. Some are so quick to be judge him before the truth is being revealed. Leave him alone and Ronnie finds someone else to lie on. One more person wrote, say what? Those rappers really should just stop. Jay-Z is always insecure and sending death threats. He did the same thing to Sean Paul reggae artist and Sean didn't want Beyonce, yes. According to 50 Cent, Jay-Z is not acting alone in carrying out such alleged crimes. 
crimes. He allegedly has support from moguls like Diddy, who himself has been associated with numerous alleged crimes. Diddy's alleged involvement, particularly through his head of security, suggests a significant role in the situation, raising public concerns. There is now increased worry regarding Cassie's safety, with people mindful of the tragic events involving Kim Porter during her relationship with Diddy. Speculation is rife that Cassie may be in danger after speaking out against the influential mogul in the industry. Concerned individuals draw parallels between the current situation and past events involving Kim, fearing that history could repeat itself for Cassie. The sudden death of Kim Porter deeply shook the entertainment industry, leaving loved ones and supporters grappling with disbelief over how a seemingly healthy young woman could succumb to pneumonia. The tragedy was compounded by widespread skepticism surrounding Kim's diagnosis. Initially, uncertainty surrounded Kim's death, with the first coroner's report indicating the presence of toxins in her body and an undetermined cause of death. The mysterious disappearance of the initial coroner added to the intrigue, with a subsequent coroner later attributing the cause of death to lobar pneumonia. Notably, Jaguar Wright, often regarded as a forthright commentator in the entertainment industry, succinctly captured the sentiment surrounding Kim's death. Kim died from pneumonia, but there's the first coroner's report that said that she died it was ruled a homicide and they found toxins in her. Jaguar Wright subtly hinted at the possibility of certain poisons inducing symptoms similar to pneumonia, implying a potential connection to Diddy in some capacity in the case. They have poisons that create heart attack and pneumonia-like symptoms. The most unsettling aspect of the case emerged when the initial coroner, who had made his findings public regarding Kim Porter's death, was discovered dead. Tuffy News TV first reported this distressing development. I've been told that he he was the head of the snake into the investigation of the passing of Kim Porter. And not only that, y'all, he was the one who initially found something problematic Tuffy didn't stop at revealing the coroner's demise. His industry informants provided additional information. According to Tuffy, he received an email from one of his followers detailing that Kim Porter purportedly attempted to reach her personal doctor but faced difficulties in doing so. This alleged struggle led her to make a critical mistake, described as the most significant of her life. According to sources, after Kim Porter futilely waited for her doctor to respond, she confided in the father of her daughters, who then directed her to another doctor of his choosing. Unfortunately, despite these efforts, they were unable to save her. Surprisingly, it suggested that Kim had a premonition of the unfolding events. Allegedly, she sent a group text to her close friend saying, he got me. However, the phone was reportedly confiscated by the security team brought by Diddy when he arrived at Kim's house after her demise. There's another dimension to the suspicion surrounding Diddy's involvement in Kim Porter's death. Diddy, known for being a serial cheater, reportedly engaged in infidelity with Kim's best friend at the time, Sarah Chapman. The timing of Sarah's pregnancy coincided with Kim's, causing profound emotional distress. This trauma visibly impacted Kim's health. And of course, Diddy just had to rub it in with the expensive gifts he got Sarah Chapman. People are now suggesting that Kim might have hid the things that are now revealed through Cassie. One of the internet users wrote, So disgusting and wicked. For a man that has daughters, I hope he is still going to be held accountable for all the women he a. Let him share a cell with R. Kelly. Another one added, He settled very quickly. But my question is this, how long does Cassie have? Diddy settled very quickly and is playing the humble card, but I call he is plotting, and it's a matter of time to see how this really ends. I hope Cassie is protected properly. One more person added, This settlement was announced exactly three days after the anniversary of Kim Porter's death. This was a humiliation ritual BC Diddy got out of line. Diddy has faced a recent setback in his personal life regarding his relationship with Young Miami. A close friend of Young Miami explained, With everything going on, Young Miami is choosing to step back for now. The future is uncertain, but for the time being, both of them have decided that it's best to take a break. Young Miami is one half of the popular rap duo, The City Girls, alongside JT. Jatavia Shakara Johnson. The duo, hailing from Miami, Florida, gained prominence after an uncredited guest appearance on Drake's hit single, In My Feelings, in 2018. Signing with Quality Control Music in 2017, the City Girls made their debut with the mixtape Period in 2018, followed by their first studio album, Girl Code, in the same year. Their music has produced platinum-certified U.S. Top 40 singles, including Twerk, featuring Cardi B and Act Up. The duo has continued their success with albums 
films like City on Lock 2020 and Raw 2023. Diddy, renowned as a recording artist and music producer, has been involved in high-profile relationships throughout his illustrious career. Rumors gained traction when Young Miami remained relatively quiet online amidst the allegations and the subsequent settlement. Instead, it seems she was occupied with planning a Friendsgiving ahead of the holidays. My best friend! My baby gal! Carisha shared visuals from her gathering and showcased some of her guests. However, keen-eyed fans and critics quickly observed the absence of her usual plus one in the footage. Young Miami infused her Jamaican taste into the event, offering a catered menu that included island classics such as oxtail, curry goat and shrimp, rice and peas, mac and cheese, and cabbage. After the Shade Room shared clips of Carisha's event, social media users flooded the comment section with over 11,000 remarks. Some remarked on misspellings in Young Miami's printed menu, while others focused on notable absences, particularly pointing out the non-attendance of Diddy and JT. However, some pointed out his questionable behavior with the girls of this industry. However, reportedly on the basis of these incidents, Diddy seems to be arrested in not time, and if he got arrested, there will be no escape for JAZ2. That's it for today. See you in the next video. Until then, goodbye.